Hello, I'd like to talk to you about Sony's new open back professional headphones, the MDR MV1s. Now, headphones originally aimed at the professional audio market have proved some of the most enduring and satisfying headphone designs over the years. Classics like the boxy Bayer Dynamic DT150s or Sennheiser's popular HD25s, both very rewarding for general use as well as for professional listening. Could these new MDR MV1s join those classics? First impressions are very positive. They're very light, just 223 grams without the cable, which is detachable and screws in securely to the left hand ear cup. There's a quarter inch plug at the end of the cable and a 3.5 millimeter adapter included. The ear cups incidentally do fold flat. The ear pads are very soft, so you can happily wear the headphones for hours on end without any suggestion of feeling your head's in a clamp or experiencing any sweaty, overheating, soggy ears. One intriguing feature is this scale on the side of the headband that uh, sort of measures how big your head is. I'm a, I'm a size 8 according to Sony's numbering. Inside, there are 40mm drivers which claim an exceptional, way beyond human hearing frequency response of up to 80,000 Hz. The open back design with ducts in the ear cups means the sound isn't contained and shouldn't resonate and reflect around. It should be free to expand into a wide sound stage with a neutral bass free from reverberation. That's the theory, anyway. Now, Sony's in part aiming the MV1s at people who mix object-based three-dimensional audio, such as Dolby Atmos and Sony's own 360 reality audio. At its most sophisticated, you experience 3D audio in cinemas and home surround sound systems with, in the case of Atmos, up to 64 separate audio channels delivered through dedicated speakers that really do give you multi-directional sound. Although 3D audio is traditionally associated with movies, music tracks are now being mixed and remixed into 3D too. Amazon Music, Apple Music and Tidal, for example, all feature them. The goal is to give the impression of depth even when you're listening on headphones and in effect you've only got two audio channels, one speaker clamped to each ear. By introducing micro delays at different frequencies, mixing tries to mimic how your ears pick up sounds to create an authentic 3D effect. Checking how a music track plays back on headphones, which used to be a mere formality at the end of a mixing session, has now become very important. I took the headphones along to We Are Audio, the studios in Bristol where the gadget shows mixed, so that mixers Ruth and Ben could have a listen and compare the Sonys to their kit, including the Sennheiser HD 650s they normally reach for when mixing on headphones. After some debate, we concluded they're both very good, but quite different. The Sennheisers have a warmer sound and more body, whereas the Sonys have a wider sound stage and, as promised, separate sounds extremely well, though they do have an emphasis on higher frequencies. Away from the professional environment, I feared that all that separated precise sound might lead to an incoherent audio experience, but it doesn't. Happily, everything sort of comes together when you're not concentrating on the separate sounds, making listening a real pleasure. The low impedance, just 24 ohms, helps you get good volume even when listening from a phone. The MV1s aren't cheap, at just under 400 quid, uh, but that's less than the likes of Apple's AirPods Max and not hugely more than many top-end noise-cancelling Bluetooth headphones. You can use Sony's headphone app to calibrate the MV1s to your ears by uploading pictures of your ears. Now, initially, this was a bit hit and miss. It seemed to think my right ear was a houseplant. But eventually I got there, and I think the sound might be even better after calibration. However, a big caveat is that the calibration only works with a very limited number of streaming apps. For most people, I think it's going to be too much trouble. Of course, these are, at heart, fairly simple headphones. There's no Bluetooth, no noise cancelling, either passive or active, no in-headphone processing, and you'll probably need a dongle of some sort to use them with your phone, because most phones these days don't come with a 3.5mm socket. And there's always the possibility that phones in the future may become Bluetooth only and not allow any form of wired connection. For that matter, you'll also need a workaround of some sort to use them with Sony's 
those latest high-end TVs, which dropped their headphone jacks as of last year. Now, while I'm quibbling, it's a pity they don't come with any form of bundled carrying case, and also, obviously, because they're an open-back design, people around you can hear what you're listening to, which may not be appropriate in all listening situations. Overall, though, I think the MV1s are very, very nice headphones to listen to, and they're particularly good if you're keen on exploring the developing world of 3D audio. I think they really could gain classic headphone status.